Welcome back everyone. Apologies for the long delay in getting content to you on this channel. I've um, been trying to keep up with things the best I can, but we've had a difficult couple of weeks uh, with uh, the health of one of my family members. Things are doing okay at the moment, so I've got a little more time. I'm going to try and get caught up here over the next couple of weeks with some of the content. I've actually got two videos ready to go for you. This one, and then a start of a new Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought series, which will be coming out tomorrow. And it's an hour long, so be ready for that one. But we're ready to dive back into Grand Tactician the Civil War. It is July 1862, and things are going okay at the moment. Uh, I guess they could be better, but we've got a pretty decent army fielded right now. Uh, what I'd really like to see would be to improve those European relations. And we've got a couple of things coming down the road. Maybe by 1863 we can see that happen. Let's dive into today's episode. And man, right off the bat, we have a battle happening here. And it's one of those rare instances where we have an opportunity to take on an army that we outnumber. So uh, our 35,000 man, well, 31,000 man uh, army of the Shenandoah is going up against an army uh, a little more than half our size. Uh, and we've got him behind his own line. So he's behind my lines, actually. So if we hit him here, we might be able to just cause that army to disintegrate and cease to be an effective force for a little while. Okay, so we're fighting on the Fredericksburg Battlefield. He's going to be holding Lee's Hill. If you've ever been to the uh, Fredericksburg Battlefield, this is a quite a prominent location. It might be about the highest point in this area. So uh, it's definitely going to be a tough nut to crack, and we're going to have to take it. But the good news is we have the numbers. So uh, we'll go ahead and get ourselves into position, and we'll just try to keep our army together, uh, try to get everybody across together, and then I think we're probably going to want to have to... Uh, find a good spot you can see here the the height of this hill and, and why that's a prominent location we might actually be better to attack from this side here uh, although that's in the open i'm thinking maybe the woods are better off so we're going to dig in right along this creek here and then we'll see what happens okay he's not where i expected him to be i was going to dig in along this creek but he's actually right here so we're going to run into him a lot sooner than I expected to, and that might become a problem for some of the orders that I've issued. So uh, let's try to retract some of those orders. We're going to call our artillery back to this spot over here, but they've already been kind of moving out, so I'm a little concerned about what that might cause to happen here. Um, let's get Taylor's cavalry to go engage these guys while I work on issuing new orders to all of my divisions based on what we've discovered here. Okay, so Taylor, uh, with mixed cavalry weapons, so that's not ideal, is going to take on uh, this pretty large Union Brigade here for the time being. I actually want to... I don't want Taylor to push too far here. Uh, but he's basically covering while we get everybody else into position. And we'll see how he does. But uh, right now the numbers look good. Uh, like I said, big advantage in uh, manpower. We also have a nice advantage in morale. So everything's in our favor as long as we can just keep from him driving off some of my units before I can get everybody into place. These mixed cavalry weapons are not ideal for this kind of a fight. But we're just trying to hold off. Okay, so Taylor just broke, but he did his job. He bought time. Uh, we're going to get Hardy's division up in here uh, along this. Uh, actually, I kind of prefer they dig in behind this creek here rather than the railroad. So we're going to dig them in right there. Get a Vander Law up here in this spot. Because uh, it looks like he is sending some units down there. I've got Fulkerson... Uh, with Stewart's cavalry, but they've only got about 400 men, so that's not not necessarily an ideal situation there. We'll go ahead and send Benning's division up, start getting them into position. Uh, still got a little while before everybody gets in position, but it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, so we've got a long day of fighting ahead of us. Okay, so the enemy has sent some skirmishers forward. They're engaging Stewart's cavalry, but also the left flank of the New York Copperheads, who have the sharpshooter perk that they will make good use of right here uh, by shooting at long range. That's going to 
start leveling that up. Right now they get a 10% accuracy bonus. If they get to the next level, that's going to go up even higher. Uh, so we'd like to see them engaging at long range. They've got the 36th West Virginia next to them under Evander Law. Uh, and now we've got Loring's division moving up into this position as well. He's, he's dug in right here along uh, the front of Lee's Hill. I'm still working on getting my artillery into place. I'm going to bring Stonewall Jackson's division in right here. And then Benning is going to come up here to try and threaten their flank. Okay, we're finally starting to get into position here. Still having some issues with some of these units not doing what they're supposed to. Like, these guys here facing the wrong direction. That's just not them, it's them here. Second Virginia. There we go. Let's get them facing the right way. I've sent some skirmishers out to try and engage some of these uh, artillery units that he's got out front at the moment. I'm starting to get some of my artillery into position. He's been shelling my 24-pounder howitzers and pretty effectively too. Uh, Taylor has recovered. And we're going to go throw him out on our flank here while we continue to wait for a few of our other divisions to get in position so we can actually launch this attack. Current situation, uh, about 500 casualties on each side. Nothing really significant. Benning's finally getting into position with his 8,700-man division. I believe that's my largest division. We're still waiting for some of his brigades to get over there. Okay, so Benning's getting his three large brigades into position. You can see those are both, they're all three uh, almost full size. And they're going to be bringing in uh, the, the flanking attack that I think is going to sew this up. And once we see him in significant enough disarray, then we can send all of these brigades forward. But most of the damage is going to be done by these 8,000, 9,000 men here. He's starting to shift to deal with that. You can see what a significant hill this is that he's got. So it's not ideal for us to be attacking up this hill. That's why I wanted to try and come around from the side like this. Looks like Wharton's going to be getting in there first. They've got Lawrence rifles. From our friends in Austria. We've got the first South Carolina volunteers here. It may be worth it once the attack on the flank actually engages uh, to send these guys forward just because it'll add the Anson County congregation there will come up and maybe dig in along this railroad it'll just I don't know why their formation is screwed up there but it'll add to the uh, the disarray if I have attacks on two sides even though this is a tough place to attack All right, Wharton's Brigade, first action of the war. Greg's Brigade's getting in on the action now. They're state's rights guest. If ever a guy was given a name that destined him to be a Civil War general, a Confederate general in particular, it's him. All right, we're gonna send Taylor's Brigade up and we're gonna hit this battery. Wreak some havoc here. Still only about 850 casualties on each side. All right, we're gonna send Harry Hayes forward with the Louisiana Tigers, just so we can disrupt things some more here. All right, there, Taylor broke which is not altogether unexpected, but we did destroy that battery in the process, so that was a trade-off that was worth it. And there we just broke another one of the brigades on the Union right. Still a tough, tough place to fight. We don't want to attack up that hill. 
So we'll come at them from the sides here as much as we can. Alright, we'll keep the Louisiana Tigers going. Looks like they're going to try to grab some of those guns. I need guests to advance a little more here. Or, uh, not guests, but Greg. How we doing here? Warden's Brigade hasn't taken a single casualty yet. I think the Union's firing down at the guys in front of them. South Carolina Volunteers are taking most of the casualties so far. I do want McCausalyn to move up a little bit. And let's send uh, the Ringgold Brigade in behind them as kind of a reserve, just in case. But I feel like this is going well. Casualties are even, but remember, we're attacking a strong defensive position. And we've got a significant advantage in manpower. So we'll take even in this one. However, I feel by the time it's over, it's not going to be even. Alright, Wharton. Let's keep doing your thing here. I don't think this uh, unit's going to last very long with the way we're firing on him right now. Nice. Okay. We're going to keep pushing forward. Guest, I want him out here further. I want Greg right here. We're just going to keep rolling them up on both sides if we can. Nice job by the Louisiana Tigers. I'm going to bring Allen's rifles up to this little gap in the line right there. It's not going to take much more to win this one. We gotta hit this battery. I know we're we're facing a lot of fire here right now for the New York Copperheads, but I want to I want to deal with this battery. Where are the Louisiana Tigers skirmishers? Oh, probably manning the, those guns. All right, come on, guys, let's press forward. Orders are taking a long time, I think. Yeah, Johnson's way too far back. I need to move my army commander up. I'm a little worried about Hayes facing these guns here. Still moving up, up the hill through the woods here. It's a tough spot. Come on, Hayes. Let's deal with that battery. Those are six-pounder field guns. They weren't even great guns. Uh, come on, guest. Right now you're just in the way, buddy. He's fragmented and exhausted. That's not helping. That just shows you how, I mean, marching around the flank and then trying to get up this hill just exhausts the men before they even get into the fight. But, we're about to capture the objective. And he's out. He's like, I have had enough. As soon as we took that objective, that was all it took. So now he's going to start falling back. And this is where we're going to inflict a lot of casualties and make what was a pretty even fight in terms of casualties turn into a very uneven one. I'm not going to pursue too heavily here, though. But uh, just kind of from the eye test, I'm liking Louisiana Tigers... Uh, for a battle citation for this one. Yeah, two to one casualties is how we ended up. Uh, I'm also thinking I might give one to that cavalry unit. Even though they broke, uh, I put them in a difficult position from the start to have to hold things. 
Okay, victory at Fredericksburg, 35th Army fleeing in panic. Uh, let's go to that army for a minute here. Uh, we do have a couple of things we need to take care of. Number one, giving out our battle honors to the 1st Louisiana Tigers. Let's take a look at Harry Hayes for a minute. Yeah, we'll go ahead and promote him to Brigadier General. Um, looking at my division commanders, obviously Stonewall Jackson is going to need a corps at some point when we have one available to us. Uh, in the meantime, though, I think I'm going to go ahead and promote Hardy to Major General. Uh, Benning, yeah, he's a colonel in command of a division. We need to at least get him to Brigadier General. Um, actually, Gist might be the better for that job, but now I've just made Benning... Well, yeah, he could still command a brigade. Um, let's promote Gist, and actually we're gonna we're probably going to swap them out. I don't know how that's going to work out, but I do need to get Taylor upgraded. Now we have no available weapons. Okay. Okay, meanwhile, out here in the West, the Western Army has driven off the Union. Uh, I believe we fought a battle there the last episode. Uh, so we're going to try to solidify things in Cairo now if we can. I could really use some supply there. We're only at 62% supplies. Thought maybe there'd actually be... Oh, there's a base of supply here. So we ought to be able to get some decent supply for that army. It just doesn't seem to be happening right now. Uh, let's take a look at projects real quick, see if there is anything that is available at the moment. Not a lot. Market reform and trade deals. I don't think trade deals is really something we need to worry about right now. I do want to look at how we're spending our money. Our POW camps are overcrowded. Nashville prison camp. Uh, we're going to have to upgrade our prison camp because we keep capturing soldiers. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at Nashville for a second here. We do have a supply depot there. There's the prison camp. Uh, it won't allow us to upgrade that. Uh, oh, it's because we're at CCC. Uh, so we've got to deal with our funding before we can build anything. What are we working on on policies right now? I feel like, we, yeah, we were addressing that. We're printing notes. We're 13 days away. Well, the Department of Pennsylvania is still floating around behind the lines, too, and they're trying to take uh, Petersburg on me here. In the meantime, looks like the Army of East Tennessee is finally going to get its chance to show what it can do in combat under A.P. Hill, who's been in the news lately. If you haven't seen that, they just dug poor A.P. Hill up from his grave. He was under a statue. They removed the statue. Uh, and despite the protests of A.P. Hill's family, uh, they are removing him as well. So they recovered his body. They found some bones. Um, his casket, his coffin had disintegrated, basically. Uh, but they did find him. So it looks like pretty even numbers here between these two armies. Uh, that we'll be facing. Actually, um, i got to remember when we come back to give Army of Shenandoah their third perk. Actually, I guess we can do that right now. Um, I'm thinking since they're kind of fighting behind the lines, dealing with those different forces, I like the idea of intelligence gathering for them. Um, all right, let's fight it. Okay, we uh, get to fight a defensive battle, which is ideal, uh, because we're going to make him march a long way. Even though he's got the morale advantage on us, pretty much everything else is looking good for us. So, uh, the objective point's down in a valley, so that's not really ideal. We could, we could throw some guns up on top of these hills, and then maybe line up on the opposite hills. I don't know. I might dig in along these trees right here. And wait for him. He's most likely... He's got two armies. Uh, one may come from this side up here. It looks like it might be the only entry point. So they may all come from that side. So we probably can expect him to come down one of these roads over here. So maybe that's where we'll dig in is along this side here. Okay. Uh, here's our first side of the enemy though. I don't think much is going to happen because it's getting to be nighttime already. Uh, but I did dig in and guess pretty accurately which way he'd be coming from. Uh, so we're in a perfect position to receive his attack. It's just probably not going to happen. 
on day one. He's going to get the chance to redeploy after having seen me. So kind of wish that wasn't the case. I do have one cavalry unit held up here just to keep an eye on things. Yeah, there. He's, he's spotted me. We got probably about 20 minutes before the end of the day. We are going to get a little bit of nighttime action here. It's really hard to see what's going on in the dark, but we've got nice big brigades here. Brown Mountain Boys with Plains Rifles. Same with the First Royal Volunteers. They also have Plains Rifles. And they're going to get a few volleys off. Our guns are also going to get a chance to fire. But I think I think here at 9 or 10 o'clock this is going to end because it is July. Oh, he's coming at me. First Royal Volunteers, Brown Mountain Boys, Pike's Brigade here in the center. And now we've got... Osterhaus coming at the Virginia Brigade, which is only a 600-man brigade that I really shouldn't even have on the line. When we redeploy at the end of the day, we're going to pull Smith off the line. We should probably just put Imboden in there. We've got the Texas Brigade over here under Ripley. So far, we're driving him back with pretty significant casualties. But he does have another army out there. Yep, there's the end of the day. Now we're going to get a chance to redeploy, but so is he. Oh, it's going to not let me have that little spot right there. It figures. All right, otherwise we're pretty much going to just hold the line where we are. It did pull me back a little bit for some reason. We could actually dig in, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Things are going to pick up right where they left off. All right, Barksdale, pour it into him. We just got to hold the line here in the center as best we can. Hopefully, uh, Barksdale's Cal Calgary Highlanders can put some fire into the flanks here. It's a pretty good defensive position I've got him dug in along the railroad over on my left. Yeah, there's no way that first brigade is gonna hold there. This is a good spot to fight a battle. Does have some guns up there that I'd probably need to concern myself with a little bit. I'll send some skirmishers out there. Although the Roughneck Razorbacks aren't taking too many casualties so far. I also have Sibley's 1300 man cavalry unit here. We could start sending them around. Maybe I'll hit that. That's a big artillery unit there. All right, we've driven off two brigades over on our right. Three to one casualties so far. That's excellent. We do need to keep an eye out because there's another army out there somewhere. I don't think we've seen the other army yet. Now he's going to launch another attack on my left. So that's going to be the Flanders Flock. And Imboden's Brigade are going to take the brunt of that fight. He's actually got some high ground, but we're dug in on this railroad. He's fragmented. Feeling pretty good right now about this whole situation. So 
still waiting on Sibley to get down here around the outside. All right, he's pulling back again. We are going to have to do more than that to win the battle, though. I just got to keep an eye out. I'm hoping he doesn't surprise me somewhere, like come up behind me or something like that with that other army. Okay, Sibley. Let's get up here and hit Bragg. Once I get him close, I'm going to give him orders to charge. But I don't want to charge too early. He is firing at us, though. Okay, we're up the hill. Hit him. Sibley may break in this process, but hopefully not before he destroys that battery. Keep hitting him. He left him unprotected out on his right. All of these, this entire army is basically all disintegrated. I'm guessing his other one's in better shape. There we go. Took care of that unit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send Sibley back. No, not that way. I'm going to send him back, and I'm, I just want to cover my rear just to be safe. Literally and figuratively, cover my rear. So he's reformed, and he's launched another attack at my center this time, and now we've got some daylight. Can actually see what's going on a little better here. Brown Mountain boys have taken uh, a significant amount of casualties, but nothing they can't overcome. They've got support on both sides. Still waiting for Sibley to get over there to cover that road to my rear. I've got McCray up here covering this road just in case. I still feel like we have not seen the other enemy. Yeah, the Army of Indiana, 17,000 men. We haven't seen him yet. He's out there somewhere. The fight continues. It's 10.30 in the morning. He keeps launching these onslaughts at me. He has got he had really high morale, like 70 coming in. So it's not surprising that we haven't broken him yet. I think we're getting the first sights of the Army of Indiana coming in up on my right, which is ideal because that's uh, the division that hasn't really taken a lot of hits. They've got 10,000 men up there. I've only taken 300 casualties so far. It's my center I'm most concerned about. Uh, Nathan Bedford Forest Division has lost uh, about 10%. Um, Claiborne, a little less than that. But it does appear he's coming in at me from over there. Okay, he just launched another pretty big attack at Claiborne's division down here. I feel like everybody's doing pretty good. There's a lot of, a lot of dead blue here. This guy's wounded. Look at him. He's moving around. That's something I haven't seen before. One of the guys laying there moving around. Most of them are dead. He's definitely not. Yeah, you can see some of these other guys moving too. That's kind of a cool little feature. All right, we're throwing him back again, but here he comes again. My goodness. I don't know how much of this I can take. Although we've inflicted 7,000 casualties to our nearly 2,000. We're starting to deal with some ammo issues. Imboden's low on ammo. All right, let's bring French up here. Oh, uh, yeah, that's definitely the Army of Indiana starting to show up. Man, 
for all that fighting and all those casualties that we've inflicted. I mean, that, that first army, the Army of Michigan's got to be, yeah, he's, he's getting close to 50% casualties as an army. And we're just now starting to inflict casualties on the second one. We've taken out most of his guns, uh, but still, he fights. That shows how high his morale was. And here comes a fresh army that we've got to take on now. Okay, so here comes the first attack now by the Army of Indiana. Do need to keep an eye out. Our ammunition's getting low. Brown Mountain boys are down to less than 30 rounds. I did send some skirmishers out. I may need to call them back in. I'm trying to deal with these guns here, for example. But he is a little bit more localized to the center, so I'm going to try to bring my left flank up to try and hit him. Imbedin's down to just eight rounds per man. And now we're going to see Wheeler's division getting involved for the first time in a significant way. All right. Texas Brigade's going to swing around and hopefully catch this second brigade as they start advancing. Catch them in the flanks. Mainly just need our center to be able to hold. Let's bring McRae down. I don't think there's anything out there. Same with Sibley. Bring him in to help with the center just in case. Okay, we've lost 2,400 men, inflicted 8,000 casualties. This will be a. This is going to end up being a major victory because we just need to hit 27% casualties inflicted, as long as ours don't go over 22. This is in uh, Eastern Kentucky, so this will be huge for us if we can beat these guys. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the Army of Tennessee down in Nashville. Those two corps. Uh, to get up to a good readiness state and then we can advance them into central Kentucky. Alright. This is going well. Yeah, we got him. He's going to break now. Army of Indiana suffered the same fate as the Army of Michigan. That was just too strong of a defensive position for us, and he had too far to march to that end of the battlefield. I do want to take a look at the number. Look at that. Army of Michigan, over 50% casualties. That's beautiful. Let's look at the combat report for a second for us. Uh, you can see here, I want the combat report, not the strength report. Uh, Forest Division inflicted 3,600 casualties brown mountain boys 1798 total victories uh, they were at the center of that from the beginning took 700 casualties as well but they held the center of the line that whole time how about the royal volunteers how did they do in that same one i think they're in a, a different division i think that's wheeler's division yep they inflicted 1200 so i like how both of them did uh, in terms of just holding the center. So I think those are the two we're going to give our battle stars to for this one. All right, glorious victory at London. That's London, Kentucky. Uh, that, like I said, is going to drive off those two armies there. I do, I feel like we need to build some kind of a base of supply here, though. Uh, so, oh, I don't know. Oh, we're back up to B, so we can build. Excellent. I don't know if we can build this while those guys are in in range still we might have to wait until they're out of the way i think that's probably the case um we do have some more things available to us 
Right now I'm looking for anything that's going to help bring up the British intervention, which isn't quite there yet. Because especially their navy would be very helpful right now. What we're watching for, of course, is uh, getting these two corps to a state of readiness so we can march up into central Kentucky right here and hit the Army of Ten the Tennessee, uh, 27,000 strong Army of the Mississippi. So there's about 44,000 men there. Uh, our Army of Tennessee has 45,000, so that would be ideal. We can do that. Looking at the Army of East Tennessee, Nicholas Pierce is in command of the Brown Mountain Boys. I feel like his numbers, his uh, stats are good enough that we can promote him to Brigadier General. Uh, can't say the same yet about Good Brian, who commands the Royal Volunteers. We gave them their star as well. He's not quite there yet. Let's take a look at our division commanders. Wheeler's got a lot of fame, but not a lot of uh, good stats to show for it. Forrest is a different story. He's a division commander. I think we can probably go ahead and promote him to Major General. Uh, Claiborne, not quite yet. Uh, A.P. Hill is a lieutenant general already. We're not going to go any higher than that with him. I'm going to look here and see. I don't know what we've got as far as recruits available right now. Uh, we do have 14,000. Ah, there's a couple of units we might be able to get enough uh, to scrape together. Yeah, not really. We're going to have to wait a little while because I do have a couple of new um, patron units that have been requested. I want to get them in the field as quickly as I can. Uh, but that's going to require a little bit of time or some better policies. We're five days away from print notes. We did drive off that army of Pennsylvania, Department of Pennsylvania that was giving us fits in Richmond. Uh, looks like he made it back up there, though. I think we can probably move these guys up at least to Charlottesville. Okay, we see he's made a big jump now in recruiting. The beginning of this episode, he was at 250-something. He's up to almost 300,000 now in the uh, field. We're going to start seeing bigger armies uh, and longer odds as far as some of these uh, fights go, uh, just because we're not going to be able to keep up with him in terms of recruiting. Send envoys. This will further improve relations with the European great powers. That's what we want. Um, eventually, though, we're going to need some other things to happen. Uh, these 5% bonuses at a time just aren't going to be enough. All right. These guys are definitely having some supply issues here. Let's see if we can get a deep... Uh, I may not be able to build this because of the... Oh, it let me. Uh, the, the CCC Plus rating. But we're about to uh, print notes policy uh, completed. That will allow us to improve that a little bit. Yeah, we're just less than a day away from that happening. And then we'll see where we're at with policies, and I think we'll probably wrap this episode up at that point. Oh, no, we're going to get... I don't know if I'm ready for that fight. Oh, that's my army that's in Cairo. I kind of need to hold on there if I can. Uh, we're going to have long odds, but let's go ahead and do it. All right, so the good news is that we are on the defensive. We've got... Some nice spots to try and protect. He's going to be coming down, uh, probably down these roads here. Uh, it's a lot to try and cover all of these crossings, especially if he were to try and go out there. But I actually have deployment ability on all of these crossings already. So I'm going to be able to really dig in. I've got a nice amount of engineering points. I'm in good shape to be able to make a fight of this, despite uh, the low morale that I'm dealing with. Um, you can see there, well, his, his is lower than mine is, so I guess it's not as bad as I thought. Okay, I've placed breastworks. I've spent all my points. Uh, there's a couple of pontoon bridge possibilities over here that I want to keep track of. Uh, we're just going to keep one cav unit over there dismounted, because that seems the most unlikely place for him to cross. Uh, and then here I didn't build anything because there's a railroad right there that I can dig in behind. So I wanted to try and make the most of the points that I have uh, in the places that I have them. And then right here I couldn't dig in quite yet, but we'll, we'll try to build some breastworks there. All right, we've actually spotted them right off the bat. They are deployed right near the crossings. So we're going to be engaging pretty quick. I've put most of my guns here and most of my manpower here. Uh, we're pretty lightly defended on most of the other places so we'll have to keep an eye out uh, for what might happen there but for the time being 
This is where we expect it all to go down. He's going to be under a lot of artillery fire to start. You can see he's already pretty weak. It won't take much to drive some of these units off. Got Mississippi rifles here, so nice long range if he comes across on that side. Oh, there is one bridge we didn't cover. Darn it. What was I thinking there? That's the one with the railroad. We got to hurry up and get over there and cover that. No, don't go that way, Smith. No, 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 no. In fact, I don't want you to go anywhere at all. I don't know why I was choosing him in the first place. I wanted to send Wise over that way. No, that is Wise. Okay. All right. Here comes the first action. At this crossing here, Bartos Brigade. Slightly out of range. To be able to hit him, but Walker's brigade can hit him. Sending the Missouri Iron Brigade over here. Uh, Wise's brigade needs to stop, and they need to stop in a hurry because they're trying to cross the wrong way. I want you to come back this way, please. send high pressure brigade up here to this spot here and see if we can hit some of this artillery but he's got lined up right there firing on walker he is sending a couple brigades this way which mcclaws is ready for him if that happens all right here comes his first crossing attempt Chalmers to deal with this artillery because they're they're right there and they're gonna cause a lot of problems for me. We don't drive them off of that coast there, that bank. I think I might go ahead and tell the these 14 pounder Jameses to do some counter battery fire. Got some Whitworth somewhere. Here they are, yeah. We should be using them for counter battery fire, too. Right, we're finally getting Wise out of there. Because where I want to send him is over this way. There is another army out there. Besides this one. I don't think we're facing his whole force yet. Oh, Chalmers got driven off by the artillery. Only suffered 200 casualties, but same thing's going to happen to Walker's brigade if we don't deal with these guns. But my counter battery fire is working. I'm starting to see him take some losses. Actually, I would like to get these 24 pounders right up here on the on the bank. They could do some damage. My morale has dropped from that one unit breaking. Even these Mississippi rifles don't quite have the range to hit them from here. Oh yeah, they do. They're firing. Okay, perfect. Because we're inflicting casualties on a unit that can't fire back. I love it. How are we doing on his guns? That's my question right now. Combat report. Actually, strength report. Uh, he's lost 15. Excellent. He's down to 40. I'm 
I'm just worried about the morale effect of those guns on, on Walker here. I think we're okay though. Okay, these 24 pounders are gonna, gonna be nice to have hitting the units that are trying to cross. And here comes a crossing attempt now against Smith. No, Smith, where are you going? Stay where you are, please. No, 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 don't get sucked into that. They got sucked into melee combat on the bridge. That is not ideal at all. All right. I mean, he won, but I don't want him doing that. Now he's sending everybody. How are we doing here? What are the casualties looking like? Yeah, pretty good. Three to one. I need Smith to get back behind his line, though. And I need... Oh, my division commander got wounded. Darn it. I was just about to say, I need my division commander off the line. And that's why. There we go. How about now? How are we doing on the guns? We've taken out 25 of his guns. He's only got 35 left. More importantly, casualty pers Oh, there goes Smith. Darn it. And now we've got a hole right at the crossing, and he's going to cross it. Darn it. Okay. Now he's going to send a second brigade in there. That might not be as bad as we think. Maybe we can just do a lot of damage to him from a couple of sides for crossing like that. In the meantime, we're driving back the crossing over on this bridge here. Yeah, I don't think this second brigade is going to be able to hold there very long. That might be enough to win the battle when we drive him off. All right, I, I thought he had two armies here. Am I wrong about that? No, he does. And we haven't even seen the Army of the West. All the casualties we're inflicting are on the Army of Southwest Missouri. Army of the West isn't even going to get a chance to fight. Beautiful. All right, we did our jobs. That's what matters. Oh, he did send some guys over and mess up my battery there. Oh, the Army of the West just... No! Alright, he... Oh, they had just arrived, but he had already issued the order for a retreat. And so it was too late. That worked out beautifully. Alright, a couple things to do in wrapping up here. One is we're going to choose our next policy. Uh, what do we got? Support Mexican intervention would give us a plus 15 uh, to European relations, which would be absolutely huge for us right now. Um, that would get us from 40% to 55% with British inter intervention. That does not have to get all the way to 100%. Um, the higher that percentage, the more likely it becomes. Uh, so that would be really, really big. Um, that would take 28 days to do that. Uh, and in the meantime, we can continue to invest uh, financially in diplomacy, which gives us other ways to get that bonus going. Uh, our finances are a little better now since we did print notes. I'm going to drop back a little bit on industry and on military, too. Um, otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape. Don't think we're going to choose any um, battle stars for that last battle, but let me take a look a little bit. So Yancey Independence, I think we're going to give them one. Uh, they inflicted almost 500 casualties, didn't lose a man. 
Um, by the way, if you are a patron, uh, you'll note that there's this history here. Uh, what we're going to do is at the end of this campaign, I will do another patron video for everyone where I will go down through the history of every single one of the patron units so you can see your complete history of what your unit did from the beginning of the war all the way to the end. I think that'll be a fun thing to do. But for now, we're going to wrap it up right here. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Uh, and we will be back very soon with another episode. Now that we're on our little Christmas break here, I definitely have some more time to do these. Thanks for watching.